Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the show where the aim of the game is to avoid the obvious answers and find the obscure ones. Let's meet today's players. And couple number one. Hello, my name is Lauren and this is my fiancé Carl and we're from Newcastle. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Tina. This is my husband Steve and we're both from Cornwall. Couple number three. Uh, hi, I'm Harry and this is my girlfriend Beverly and we're from Leamington Spa. And finally, couple number four. Hello, I'm Catherine. This is my sister, Alison. I'm from Broadstairs and she's from St Neots in Cambridgeshire. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. A very warm welcome to Pointless. Wonderful to have you here. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. The crumbs we like to coat ourselves in. It's my Pointless friend. It's Richard. Hiya. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello there. Hello. Uh, now people start coming back for three shows. Yeah. Shows become a little bit more familiar oh, they to do. us. They and do. I really like how we've got it at the moment. Yeah. Don't yeah. you think? I think we've got a really nice bunch assembled at the yeah. moment. Lovely yeah. to have uh, Carl and Lauren back on Podium One, got through to the head to head oh, they were good. last time. They were good, weren't they? Yeah, they Likeable were. as well. Yes. That's the main thing, you know, <laughs> easy to warm to. Uh, Steve and Tina, easy to warm to. Absolutely. Uh, we didn't yeah. see it quite as much, not, got knocked out in round two in the last one. Yeah. Uh, Harry and Beverly, back for their third show. Oh, I know. Goodness me, they're like members of the family. Oh, but they are. <laughs> They've had a round one and a head to head. Uh, and Catherine and Alison, how lovely to welcome you to our crew. Uh, and a crew we are. First round today, really lovely one. I think people would do good at. Second one, huh, I wonder if it might put the cat among the pigeons a tiny oh, bit. Really? Yeah, I could be wrong. Could be wrong. Uh, there we are. Now, Ben and Joe got through to the final last time and did not win the jackpot, which means mm. we are adding another £1,000 to that, so today's jackpot starts off at £3,000. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. It will always be the pair with the highest score that gets eliminated at the end of each round. Just remember that and score as low as you dare while still giving a correct answer. Best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category today is... TV comedy. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... actors in pairs of British sitcoms. Richard. TV comedy is one of those uh, one of those subjects that everyone kind of likes. Everyone loves a bit of comedy. And what we're going to do on each board, we're going to show you seven pairs of characters that were played by the same actor. You just need to tell us which actors played these pairs, please. Seven on the first board, seven on the second. Fourteen actors to guess at home. Good luck. Thank you very much indeed. OK, so we're looking for the actors who played these pairs of parts, if that makes sense. David Brent, The Office. Andy Millman, Extras. Fran Katzenjammer, Black Books, Beverly Lincoln, Episodes. Margot Ledbetter, The Good Life, Audrey Forbes Hamilton, To the Manor Born. Sonny Foster, The Fosters, Gareth Blackstock, Chef. Norman Stanley Fletcher, Porridge, Arkwright, Open All Hours. Will McKenzie, The Inbetweeners, Adam Goodman, Friday Night Dinner. And Laura Dalton, A Fine Romance, Jean Hardcastle, As Time Goes By. There we are, Lauren. Welcome back. Uh, remind us all about yourself, Lauren. Uh, I'm Lauren. I'm from Newcastle. Uh, I work at Newcastle University. Uh, in my spare time, I particularly enjoy travelling. Um, and which department of the university are you in? Do you, are you in the administrational side? Or... I am, yeah. So um, I used to work in marketing and now I work in alumni relations, if you know what that is. Okay. I do. I, that sounds like she's being euphemistic, if you know what that is. <laughs> you know I don't I mean? think she meant... Uh, yeah. Alumni relations. Alumni relations. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I'm with you. I'm Say with no you. more. Yeah. OK, now, Lauren, what are you going to go for on the board? Who are you going to go for, I should uh, say? I am really struggling with this, which is embarrassing as the first person to go, but I don't watch a lot of television. I'm going to go for Penelope Keith. The Good Life into the Manor Born. OK, Audrey Forbes, Hamilton and the other one, Margot Ledbetter. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Penelope Keith. <laughs> Down to 25. 25 for Penelope Keith. Yeah, and I start. She was nominated for BAFTAs for both of those roles, but uh, only won it for The Good Life. She was appointed the High Sheriff of Surrey in 2002. But you don't see her in the hat and badge that often, do you? No, 
You don't yeah. see her in the hat. Maybe she only wears that for official occasions. Yeah, when she's on her horse. When she's on her horse. Riding exactly around Guildford. Her. She's lovely, actually. Have you ever met her? Is she? I've never had the yeah. pleasure. No, she's genuinely as lovely I as I bet she, she does all sorts of documentaries. She does, like, Britain's Hidden yeah. Villages, where there it's literally Penelope Keith just going around lovely, beautiful <laughs> villages, and you just think, ah, oh, yeah, I'll watch this for yes. the next hour. Thank you. OK. Uh, Tina, welcome back. Remind us all about yourself. Right. Well, I live in Cornwall. I uh, do a lot of crafting and... What, what crafting do you do? Needle felting. Needle felt. These two things I'm familiar with. Needle felting. Yeah. Less yeah. sure. Well, you get a great big load of fluff. <laughs> yes. And stab it with a needle and shape it into what you want to shape it into. Needle felting was one of the villages Penelope Keith visited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Tina, what are you going to go for? Well, there's two that I think I know. So I'm going to go for Sonny Foster and Gareth Blackstock as Lenny Henry. OK, Lenny Henry says, Tina, let's see how many of our 100 people said Lenny Henry. Lenny Henry is right. 25 is the only score we have at the moment. And you pass it. Down goes Lenny Henry to nine. Very well done indeed. <laughs> That's a lovely answer, Tina. Very well played. Sir Lenny Henry now, isn't he? Uh, thank you very much indeed. Richard Harry, welcome Hello. back. Thank you. Um, great to have you. Now, we have covered uh, computer science at Warwick. Yes. You and Beverly, violinists in the Warwick University Orchestra. Yeah. What have we not dwelt upon? Uh, so, um, alongside my um, degree, I've also started uh, teaching uh, part-time. Um, so, some first-year computer science um, seminars that I've started teaching. Very good. Um, Harry, what are you going to go for? Um, I probably know the most obvious one, and, this, and I have a feeling about the second most obvious one. So I think I'm going to go for that, but I'm slightly concerned I've got the wrong actor, but I'm going to go for it anyway. So um, second from bottom, I'm going to go with Simon Bird. Simon Bird says, Harry, let's see if that's the right answer. How many of our 100 people said Simon Bird? Simon Bird is right. Well, nine's our low score. There you are on 12. Wow. Very well done, indeed. Simon Bird. <laughs> Some lovely scoring all round here, yeah. In the first series of The Inbetweeners, obviously, they played uh, six formers. He was 23 in the first series, Simon Bird. Wow. He was uh, believable as yeah, younger, though. Yeah. And Friday Night Dinners is one of those series that just gets better and yeah. better and better. It's become an absolute modern classic. Brilliant. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Now, Alison, Hello. welcome to Pointless. Thank you. Tell us all about yourself. Well, I'm a carer for my mum now, um, and since being that, I've been watching a lot of daytime telly, and I'm hooked on sewing bee. <gasps> oh, Never yeah. used to sew, but I've got her sewing machine out, and I'm sewing. I can't believe it. It's wonderful. So, how long ago did you start? What was your, f <laughs> your f when was your first foray into sewing? Probably about three weeks ago. <laughs> OK, what have, what have you sewn up so far? I've, I've done five Christmas stockings. Now, Alison, that board's all yours. Will you fill in all the blanks for us? Do you know, I've, my mind's gone blank with the first one. I can see him. I'm not a big fan of him, so I've forgotten his name. Um, the second one, I think, is Tams and Greg, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, we've got Ronnie Barker. I'm going for the bottom one and that's Judy Dench. Judy Dench for a final romance, and as time goes by, let's see how many of our 100 people said Judy Dench. It is Judy Dench. And down that goes to 18. Very well done indeed. 18 for Judy Dench. Very nicely done, Dame Judy Dench, of course, um, at the bottom there. Uh, the top one is... Uh, That's De uh, Ricky Gervais. Yeah, Lord Ricky Gervais. Yeah. Uh, he would have scored you 48. You're quite right, uh, Tams and Greg for Frank Katzenjammer and Beverly Lincoln. She would have scored you two points as well. Best answer on the board by some way. And you're right as well about Ronnie Barker. And he would have scored you 54. So Tams and Greg and Lenny Henry the, and Simon Bird, actually, all, all very good answers there. Thank and Judy Dent. And Judy Dent. Yeah, some lovely answers. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, there we are, halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. Nine, Tina, very well done to you. Then we travel up to 12, which is where we find Harry and Beverly, up to 18, where we find Catherine and Alison, and then up to 25, Lauren and Carl. You're not way ahead, but Carl, you know what I'm going to tell you to do. Do it. Good luck. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? 
let's put seven more actors from sitcoms up on the board, and here they are in two roles. Tom Good, The Good Life. Martin Bryce, Ever Decreasing Circles. Edmund Blackadder, Blackadder. Raymond Fowler, The Thin Blue Line. Lyndon Jones, Green Wing. Alan Johnson, Peep Show. Rigsby, Rising Damp. Reginald Perrin, The Fallen Rise of Reginald Perrin. Mrs. Hutchinson, The Liver Birds. Mrs. Slocum, Are You Being Served? Adam Parkinson, Butterflies. Gary Sparrow, Goodnight Sweetheart. And Thora Blacklock, Meet the Wife. Edie Pegden, Last of the Summer Wine. There we are. Catherine, welcome. Tell us about yourself, Catherine. Um, well, I live in lovely Broadstairs in Kent. Um, and I moved there a few years ago. And um, because I like walking, I thought I'd get a dog. So I got a, a dog from the Dog Rescue Centre and I like to name my dogs after real people. So last dog was called Gloria Honeyford because um, she was quite orange. And this <laughs> dog is called Brenda Blethyn. Um, Any just, particular reason? I just really like that name. Uh, <laughs> <good luck. laughs> uh, Catherine, 18 is what your score is at the moment. Yeah. Six or less is your target. What are you going to go for? So I'm trying to think of the ones I know which will score the best. I think, because I just used to love Reginald Perrin, I'm going to go for Leonard Rossiter. Leonard Rossiter for Reginald Perrin. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Leonard Rossiter. There is your red line. Leonard Rossiter is right. Down he goes to 33, takes your total up to 51. Uh, yeah, Rigsby's first name. Do you know Rigsby's first name in... Uh, no. Rupert. Rupert Rigsby. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Thank you very much. Richard, now, Beverly, welcome hey. back. Great to have you with us one more time. Um, tell us one other thing about Beverly. So outside of being a student at the University of Warwick and an yeah. apprentice, um, when I'm home, so when I'm not up in Warwick, I'm back in Essex, and I like to watch football with my dad. Oh, that's nice. What team, what team do you support? Um, we support Liverpool, but... I'm actually not very good at football questions, which is, you know, ironic, okay. but... <laughs> but, you know, but football is one of those, you can, you can outsource all the details to your dad, though, so you can yeah. enjoy it. Very good. OK, now, Beverly, you are on 12, 38 or less, gets you into the next um, round. Yeah, this is not a good one for me. I don't recognise anything. Um, Peep Show is Harry's favourite. Don't think I can name anyone, but I'm going to guess. I think he was an actor on it. I'm going to go David Mitchell. You're going to say David Mitchell for Lyndon Jones and Alan Johnson. Here is your red line. Let's see what happens when we say David Mitchell. Oh, bad luck. <laughs> bad luck, I'm afraid that's incorrect. It scores you 100 points. It takes your total up to 112. Sorry, Beverly. He is in peep show, though, but I'll give uh, all the answers at the end of the pass. Thanks very much, Richard. Now then, Steve, remind us all about yourself. Hello, my name's Steve, and in my spare time, I like to write children's rhyming stories based on two little Victorian bookends called Mortimer and Flo. Mortimer and Flo? Yes, I'm now into the eighth little story. I wrote them for my children yeah. originally. They're now 25 and 21. I've not quite finished them yet. <laughs> I've now introduced two little, uh, the little side characters. It's a ventriloquist act. One's quite a tall chap. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Hold uh, on, if we're a ventriloquist act, I want <laughs> Who's the dummy, right? Yeah, well, yeah, you got to wonder. Well, you're the one sitting down. It's yeah. Uh, yeah. Ricky Manso and uh, Sandy Legweek. Now, I'm not basing <laughs> them on any people that I know, no, but they're a ventriloquist no. act. Interesting. Oh, I like the sound of that. Yes. Very, I'm very good. I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't said which I haven't said which one's the dummy yet, and I'm not going to because I want to get out of this studio in one, one piece. piece. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, and listen, Steve, you are on nine. It doesn't matter what you score. Even if you get this wrong, you are still in the There's next round. There's a few, I know. There's a couple I think might be lower answers. And the fact that because it's not his most popular sitcom, I'm going to go for Nicholas Lindhurst for. Butterflies and Goodnight Sweetheart. OK, you're going to go for Nicholas Lindhurst. Let's see what happens. No red line, you're already through. How many people said Nicholas Lindhurst? It's right. Down he goes to 25. Takes your total up to 34. Not bad at all. 
That's a lovely answer, Stephen. As you say, our question setters have, uh, have missed out. Probably the most successful British sitcom of all time uh, is Rodney Trotter in Only Fools and Horses. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Carl, welcome back. Good to have you with us again. Remind us all about yourself. Um, I'm Carl. I'm a problem manager. I love sport. Uh, probably all of school one that you used to do was uh, I'm a black belt in karate and used to teach it. You are a black belt in karate. Yeah. How many different levels of black belt are there? How many um, of them dance? You can pretty much keep on going for oh, as really? long as you can keep training, yeah. Oh, really? How, how far have you gone in your...? Uh, just a second. Now then, Carl, you are on 25, which means 86 or less gets you into the next round. Do you want to talk us through that board? Um, I wish I could. Uh, I can picture quite a few of them off when I was a youngster. But I can't remember their names at all, so unfortunately I'm going to have to go for... Edmund Blackadder, Raymond Fowler as Rowan Atkinson. Rowan Atkinson for Edmund Blackadder. Here is your red line. Can you get below that with Rowan Atkinson? Let's see. It's right, and you're through. Very well done. You've done it. Goes down to 52, in fact. So it's total up to 77. Well played, Carl. Let's fill the rest of these in. Good life and ever decreasing circles. Richard Bryars. Richard Bryars is the answer, and he would have scored you 23. I think ever decreasing circles might be the most underrated of the British yeah, sitcoms. I don't really know it. Oh, it's wonderful. Um, now, Lyndon Jones and Alan Johnson. It wasn't David Mitchell. It was the brilliant Patterson Joseph, and he would have scored you four points. Uh, Mrs Hutchinson and Mrs Slocum. Molly Sugden. Molly Sugden. 18 points for that. And Thora Blacklock and Edie Pigden. Thora Heard. Thora Heard, yep. And she would have scored you nine points. So Patterson Joseph, best answer on that board. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, that brings us to the end of the first round. It means we have to say goodbye to one of our pairs. Oh, Beverly and Harry, this is it. This is yes. it. This is the big farewell. Oh, you were right through to the head-to-head. -head. I've been waiting for a, a resurgence of that form yeah. that we saw on your first show. Unfortunately, it didn't come. Oh, yeah, well, listen, it's been shame. lovely having you on the show. Thank you so much for coming to play Beverly lovely and game. Harry. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Down to three pairs. Very well done, everybody. Well done, Catherine and Alison. Lovely to have you with us for round two. Tina, our lowest individual scorer in round one. In fact, Tina and Steve, our lowest pair, so uh, very good on that middle podium. Best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two today is... Astronomy. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. Let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many planets and constellations that contain the letter E as they could. Richard? Yep, we're looking for the names of any of the eight planets in our solar system or the 88 constellations uh, which are currently recognised by the IAU uh, whose names contain the letter E, please. OK, thank you very mm. much. Lauren, what are you going to go for? This is a bit of a nightmare for me. <laughs> um, I'm going to go for one that's fairly obvious and hope that it's got an E in it because my mind's gone really blank and say Mercury. Mercury, it's definitely got an E in it. <laughs> uh, let's see how many of our 100 people said Mercury. <laughs> 58. 58 for Mercury. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of damage limitation, I suspect, in this round, uh, Mercury. It's the smallest of the planets, only just bigger than our moon. I know. Mm. It's kind of... That's kind of sweet. Yeah, I kind like of. That. Yeah. A bit disappointing. Yeah, it's a bit disappointing. Well, if you went there. It's a bit Wizard of Oz, isn't it? Mm. Thank you, Richard. Uh, Tina? I think I'm with Lauren on this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go for... Really obvious Venus. <laughs> Venus, <laughs> says Tina. OK, let's see how many of our 100 said Venus. 58. Well, Venus takes you down to 68. <laughs> uh, yeah, just like in a tennis round, it's not long before someone says Venus. Um, the temperature, the surface temperature on Venus is 900 degrees. That's balmy, isn't it? Yeah, it oh, is, balmy. yeah. I mean, you need to wear flip-flops, otherwise you'd be... It's like walking on the sand. Thank you. Uh, now, Catherine. Orion's belt, is that a constellation? Shall we find out? Yes. 
Let's Orion's do that. Orion's belt, <laughs> says Catherine. Let's see. Orion's belt. Oh, oh I'm afraid sorry. it's not. Sorry. I'm afraid that it. scores you 100 points. Uh, yeah, just Orion is the constellation, which, of course, doesn't have any in it. Um, the belt is just a fashion choice. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Um, OK, well, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a little recap of those scores. 58, Lauren, turns out to be the best score of the past. <laughs> very well done indeed. Then up to 68, where we find Tina and Steve. Then up to 100, where we find Catherine and Alison. Anything can happen in the next pass, Alison. So, yeah, a nice low score from you might still be enough to keep you in the game and get you into the head-to-head, -head, so good luck with that. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? So, remember, Alison, we're looking for planets and constellations that contain the letter E. I'm going to say Neptune. Nep... Pause. Tune. Neptune. Okay, Neptune, says Alison, no that's red the, line. That's the sound of someone saying a planet and thinking, hold on, has it got an E in it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <that's fine. laughs> It's got two, way! Um, okay, no red line, you're the high scorers. How many people said Neptune? Neptune's right. Down it goes 51. Our lowest score so far, 151 is your total. Yeah, the only one of the eight planets that's not visible to the naked eye. And uh, they worked out it existed before they actually saw it. They worked out mathematically where it must be and what size it must be before oh, they actually clever. saw it. Now, Steve, you're on 68. 82 or less gets you through. There is one more planet, but I think that'll be too high. So I'm going to go for Pegasus. Pegasus, says Steve. Let's see if Pegasus is right. Here is your red line. Pegasus is right. You are through, Steve and Tina. Oh, look, you've broken through the glass floor. Down it goes to oh. pointless. There we are. Well done. That adds £250 to today's jackpot. Takes the total up to £3,250. Scores you nothing and leaves your total at 68. Very well done. Beautifully done, Steve. Nicely played. Yeah, named after Pegasus, of course. Yeah. The winged horse. The winged horse. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Now then, Carl. You are on 58. If you can score 92 or less... You are through to the head-to-head. -head. Oh, Carl, I want to know what's going through that head, that problem-solving, problem-managing head of yours. I'm thinking my seven-year-old daughter will know most of the constellations, so it's a bit bad that I'm struggling. I'll go with Jupiter. OK, Jupiter. Someone had to. Someone had to. 92, there we are, there's your red line. Surely you can get below that with Jupiter. Let's find out. Yep, very well done. Down it goes to 78. That's good enough. Uh, 136 is your total. Well done, Carl. That's a relief. Um, yeah, one of the very few occasions on point is where you can say Earth and still get through. Because um, <laughs> Earth would have scored you 83 points. Oh, it's not through. Um, now, there's loads and loads of pointless answers here. Uh, Pegasus was a beautiful one we had there from Steve. I'll go through a few of them for you. Well done if you said Bootis, uh, Cassiopeia. Centaurus, uh, Corona Borealis, Mensa, Monoceros. Um, there's Pegasus, Perseus as well, Phoenix, a few others you could have said as well. Crater, Leo Minor, uh, Reticulum, Serpens, Telescopium uh, would have been a pointless answer. Um, one of the little secrets is you could have gone through the star signs. So Leo would have scored you five, Aries four, Cancer four, Gemini three, uh, and Pisces would have scored you two points. OK, thank you very much indeed. So, at the end of our second round, we have to say goodbye to another pair. Alison and Catherine, look at that. 151 is your total there. Um, we have to send you home on that, but you'll be back next time. But brilliant, through to the second round. And as Richard said, the second round was going to be... It was going to put the cat among the pigeons, and I think it duly did. Um, <laughs> thanks so much for playing. We'll see you next time. Alison and Catherine. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, it is now time for the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> Congratulations, Stephen, Tina, Carl and Lauren. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to pay for the jackpot, which currently stands at £3,250. But before we play that head to head, shall we just see if we can't put some more money into that jackpot by truffling out a couple of pointless answers? Here's how it works. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many varieties of wine as they could. 
Richard. Yep, six varieties up on the board. As always, uh, two of them are pointless answers, two are wines, real wines that people mentioned, and two are ones that we made up. Can you find the two pointless answers? We've had a real rash of people saying, I've definitely heard that that's a wine, so let's go for that. Which never works, because no. if you've heard of it, most people have heard of it. Yeah. So, but that's what's been happening. It's been what's, what, what's been happening, yeah. You know, because so we heard love it, giving away the money, because it's not our money. We love giving away the money, yeah, so, it's not ours. Let's do it. Yeah, come on, let's do it. Okay, here come the wines. We have got Pinotage, Gewurztramina, Muscat, Salis, Gaito, Dolcetto. This too are definite, but they'll be popular. God, be there we are, six wines. Stephen Tina, you go first. But I suggest you speak out loud, because it's in everyone's interest okay, to pool well, well, as much knowledge right, as we well, do. I know Pinotage is one and Muscat. Yeah. Gewurztramina is as well. Need to Salis, Guiatio, or Dolcetto. I'm not sure about the bottom three. Yeah, Salis is last of the summer wine. So Dolcetto? Uh, oh, Guiatio. Guaito. We'll go Guaito. Guaito, say Steve and Tina. Let us see if that is a pointless wine. There's no such thing. No bad luck. Oh, Guaito is Amazing. not. A wine, as it turns out. Now, Carl and Lauren, what are you going to go for? On the basis that that was wrong, we're going to go for Dolcetto. Dolcetto. OK, let us find out. I like your logic there. Let's see, is Dolcetto a pointless wine? Oh. It's a wine. And it's not one of the ones everyone's heard of on the board. Uh... It's a pointless wine. Very well done indeed. Beautifully done. That's the way we like to see the game played. And a lovely teamwork between the four of you as well there. Um, Goito is Italian for to whine, to complain. Oh, God. Uh, that's why that's... <laughs> you very cleverly worked out the, uh, the Salis answer. That is from, uh, from uh, Wallace and Gromit, Peter Salis. Um, that uh, was an incorrect answer. So I think the problem you had at the beginning is you knew all three of these were, were, were was a wine. And after my bit of advice saying, if you've heard of it, don't go yeah. for it, we know one yeah. of them's a pointless answer. <laughs> Which of those would you wow. say is pointless? <sighs> Maybe so, Gewurztramina would be the, the we think pointless one. Gewurztramina? Yeah. 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 Let's take a look. Is that a pointless answer? Absolutely Yay! right. Very well done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the other two scored points there. Um, Pinotage and Musket would have scored you one and two. two. Very nice. Thank you very much indeed. Well done. You managed to find one pointless answer, which means you've added £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total up to £3,500. There it is. But who's going to pay for it? Let's play the head-to-head. -head. Well, the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot, and you're now allowed to confer. You oh. can chat before you give your answers. Yeah. Best of luck to both <laughs> pairs. Our first question today is all about... Keystone species. Richard. Yeah, an interesting concept of keystone species, which is uh, a species of plant or animal that uh, plays a unique and vital role in a particular ecosystem. I'm going to show you five of them now. We'll show you alternate letters of their names as well. But what are these keystone species? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal the keystone species. How exciting to know what keystone species <laughs> are. Here they are. We've got A, S U H R C S O A Y. B, G E W L. C, O H E E S A. D, K N A O R T. And E, W L B A. There we are. Five keystone species. Steve and Tina will go first. Well, I know A, B and E, and I think the lowest of those will be A, which is Southern Cassowary. You'll say Southern Cassowary. OK, Southern Cassowary, say Steve and Tina. Carl and Lauren, do you want to talk us through the rest of that board? Uh, we had A and E. So we thought Southern Cassowary as well. Um, not sure at all on the others, so Something we're going to go for B. Go for B. Grey Wolf. Okay, Grey Wolf. 
Grey Wolf, say Carl and Lauren. So we have got Southern Cassowary versus Grey Wolf. Steve and Tina are saying Southern Cassowary. How many of our 100 people said that for A? Oh, it's right. <gasps> Down it goes to six. Very well done indeed, Southern Castlebury. Brilliant answer there. Carl and Lauren, meanwhile, have gone for Grey Wolf. Let's see how many of our 100 said that for B. Grey Wolf is right. It goes down to 44. So there we are, Steve and Tina, well done. After one question, you're up one nil. That's a lovely answer, the Southern Cassowary. There is an answer up there that would have beaten it, uh, funnily enough, which we will get to. So you wouldn't have thought that these would be keystone species. I would have, you would have thought they'd be more famous, uh, but it's interesting. Yeah. Um, so E is wild boar. Wild, wild boar. boar. Big scorer, though, would have scored you 67 points. D is a type of rat, but what type of rat? Kangaroo rat. Kangaroo like. rat. That's uh, wow. absolutely right. Look at its back legs. There you go. There yeah. you go. Um, <laughs> kangaroo rat would have scored. It's a sweet little thing. It's Look a at cute that. little thing. Is it 10 but points? That is that? actually life size. They are that big. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's the size of four kangaroos. That's why they yeah. call it the kangaroo. It's absolutely, if you saw one in real life, it's absolutely terrifying. It's about 40 foot tall. <laughs> um, and this answer would have won the point. Now, we can probably work some of this out. C star. C star. Surely. Yeah. And then what can that first thing be? I think there's only one word in the English language that would ochre. fit that. Ochre is exactly oh, the right wow. answer. Ochre, sea star. And that would have scored you four points. So very wow. well done if you said that at home. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, okay. I don't want to terrify anybody. Can I tell you something about the head-to-head -head recently? Yeah. A record has been set, a rather yeah. unusual record. And it really uh, it, it speaks to what's going to happen next, I would say. The last 10 shows in a row, it's been 2-0 in the head-to-head. Ten shows in a row. No pressure, then. Two nil. <laughs> Can you believe it? Wow. How about that? So, wow. Carl and Lauren, you could break that spell, or we could see 11 in a row, which would be quite something. Wow. This yeah. is pointless history yeah. being made here. OK, here comes your second question, Carl and Lauren. You have to win this one, stay in the game. But you get to answer it first. That's good. Our second question is all about heroes and zeros. Oh. Richard. Yeah, to simply five clues about people that relate in some way to the word hero or the word zero. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five clues, and here they come. We've got singer who had a UK top ten hit in 1985 with Holding Out for a Hero, B.T. Director of the 2012 film Zero Dark Thirty, K.B. Author of Eats, Shoots and Leaves, The Zero Tolerance Approach to Punctuation, L.T. British singer and pianist who made the 1983 album Too Low for Zero, E.J., and the actor who stars as Jack Slater in the 1993 film Last Action Hero, A.S. There we are. Now, Carl and Lauren will go first. We're going to go for the first one. Um, we know three of them, and we don't know the two, which I think will be the lowest scorers. So we're going to go for the first one, Bonnie Tyler. Bonnie Tyler, say Carl and Lauren. Now then, Steve and Tina, can you talk us through the board? Right, the bottom one is Arnold Schwarzenegger. The one above that is... Elton John. I don't know the author of the book, but we're going to go for the director of the 2012 film Zero Dark Thirty as Catherine Bigelow. Catherine Bigelow. So we have Bonnie Tyler versus Catherine Bigelow. Carl and Lauren have gone for Bonnie Tyler, the singer of We're Holding Out for a Hero. Let's see how many of our 100 said Bonnie Tyler. Bonnie Tyler is right. That goes down to 57. <laughs> Steve and Tina, meanwhile, have gone for Catherine Bigelow, the director of Zero Dark Thirty. How many of our 100 said Catherine Bigelow? Catherine Bigelow is right. Oh. And wins you the point. <laughs> History has been made. I couldn't believe it. There we are. Goes down to one. What about that, <laughs> Catherine Bigelow? And it means Steve and Tina. The run continues after only two questions. You're through to the final. Two 0 Eleven in a row. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that incredible? Uh, yeah, Catherine Bigelow, first woman to win a Best uh, Director Oscar in 2010. Isn't that extraordinary? It took mm. that long um, for the Hurt Locker. 
Um, you're quite right about Arnie at the bottom there, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, Bonnie Tyler outscores everyone. I think because the clues maybe were slightly more uh, obscure for the other two. 28 for Arnie uh, and Elton John. Um, he would have scored you 37. Now, this is another very good answer. Do you know the answer? Lynn Truss. One? Lynn Truss is the correct answer. Yeah, sold over 3 million books worldwide wow. of that one. Uh, four points. Very well done if you remembered her. And very well done as well if you remembered her. And then you, you didn't say Liz Truss who, of course, is the, yeah. uh, the politician. Yeah. I bet someone would have said Liz Truss isn't mm. that picking themselves mm. at home. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round. Carl and Lauren, listen, we will see you again next time. Um, Carl and Lauren, you've been fantastic. You will be fantastic again. Thank you so much for playing. Carl and Lauren. But for Steve and Tina, it's now time for our pointless fun. Congratulations, Steve and Tina. You Thank have you. fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. Excellent. <laughs> you now get a chance to win our pointless jackpot and at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £3,500. Oh, yes, I mean, very, very well done indeed. This Thank is only you. your second shot at it, isn't it? Yep. Second time on the show. Yes. Through the head-to-head 2-0. No arguing with that. And here you are in the final. Uh, what would you like to see come up? Uh, uh, films or... Film, music, anything. Crafting. <laughs> yeah. Knitting for Tina, anything. I'm all right with cookery and that's A bad. little bit of music, a little bit of sport, but a little bit of anything, to be honest. A little honest. bit of anything. Well, that's, that's yeah. what we like yeah. to hear, because it's... What we, be... That's what we specialise in, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Exactly. A little bit of anything. Yeah, yeah. Jack, jack of all trades, yeah. master okay. of none. Good. <laughs> jack of all trades, master of nine. Yeah. There we go. Nice. Yeah. Um, here we go. There are four things for you to choose from, and we've got... The 2020 Tour de France, Cherries, 1917, tap dancing musicals in the West End. What do we think? Um, well, not definitely not the Tour top. de France. Um, cherries? What could Cherries be? I don't know. Oh, cherries. 1917... Uh, Top dancing musical. Could be the cast of that film, 1917, but I don't know the cast. Cherries, would I guess, or 1917? We're going to go cherries. Yep, we'll go cherries. cherries. Okay. No idea what it cherries. is. Cherries. No well, let's find out together. Well, fun. <laughs> okay, very best of luck. We're looking for any of the following, please. All very different questions. These. Uh, we're looking for the name of any speaking character in Chekhov's play, The Cherry Orchard. We are looking for any UK top 40 single by Nana Cherry. Or we are looking for any of the world's top 50 cherry producing countries, please. So, Cherry Orchard, Nana Cherry, and Cherry Producing Countries. We wish you the very best of luck. There we are. Well, as always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of your answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Uh, yes. As ready as, as we'll, we'll ever be. be yes. Okay, let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Right, I guess we go for Cherry Producing Countries because there aren't any Nina Cherry songs. No, do I? Nina Cherry Orchid. So, Venezuela, sort Egypt. of South American country. Yeah, possibly Egypt. Um, uh, any, obviously, your Spain, your Portugal. Go. They're all going to be hot countries. Croatia could be one. Mm -hmm. Croatia. Uh, any other sort of that side coast? Greece, possibly. Albania, possibly. Oh. Uh, any Mediterranean countries then? I've gone so, blank. I'm really right, sorry. Right, we'll say Croatia. We'll go across to South America, um, for Venezuela, and uh, let's go for another South American country. I think we'll go for Paraguay. There's okay. 50 countries. So Venezuela, yep, go for it. Yep. Venezuela, Paraguay, and Croatia. We'll take those. Mm -hmm. Okay, you've. Landed on your three answers. Let's uh, we'll stop the clock. There we go. Okay. So let's give me. Let's have those answers again. Right. Venezuela. Venezuela. Paraguay. Paraguay. And Croatia. Croatia. Of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Do you Possibly think? Croatia. Okay. Croatia will put last. Least likely to be pointless. Paraguay. Paraguay, and then Venezuela goes in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got Paraguay, Venezuela. Croatia. Well, three answers on the board. Wouldn't it be marvellous if one of these turns out to be a They're pointless answer? Three countries. <laughs> and well, wins yeah. that jackpot for you. £3,500. What would you like to do with that if you were to win it? Steve, I'm going to ask you first. I've got an extensive Queen collection. That's the rock band, not Her Majesty. Uh, there's just one or two items that have been released in the UK that I haven't got yet. One of them is quite expensive, which would probably take up the whole amount of the money. So 
I might not get all of yeah, that. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Tina, what would you like to do? Um, I wanted to buy a micro piggy, as I love them <laughs> very much. OK. Yeah. But he says... <laughs> OK. Well, well, good luck. Let's see. I mean, let's hope one of these answers wins that jackpot for you and then you can... It'll be a nice problem for you to have. You can discuss on your way back to Cornwall what you'll do. <laughs> half, half a record. <laughs> half, half, half a pig. <laughs> Very nice. Um, OK, well, your first answer was Paraguay. In all three cases, we're looking for the world's top cherry-producing countries. 50 top cherry-producing countries, to be precise. Paraguay was your first answer. Let's see how many people said Paraguay for £3,500. Is it pointless? All oh. bad luck. Down. Not Paraguay. Oh, don't. Let's move on to your second answer, Venezuela. Let's see how many people named that as a cherry-producing country for £3,500. Is it pointless? Oh, oh no, oh. bad luck. Oh, bad luck, dear. not Venezuela. Let's turn to your third and final answer, Croatia. Is that in the top 50 cherry-producing countries for £3,500? Might it be pointless? Oh, oh, Croatia is right. Oh, my God. Well, Paraguay <laughs> turned out not to be a correct answer, nor indeed was Venezuela correct, but oh, Croatia God. is absolutely on the money. Down we go with Croatia. Still going down. You've done it. Very well done indeed. Ah, oh, congratulations. Croatia was a pointless answer, which means you are taking home today's jackpot of £3,500. <laughs> What a performance, beautifully played, and also for the Jeopardy of television, you left it till last as yeah, well, which is I wanted to go that way. It's exactly yeah. the way to do it. Deliberately chose two incorrect answers. Yes. Uh, <laughs> a beautiful category, as I think you spotted straight away. 25 pointless answers there for yeah. that, uh, that category. Let's uh, deal with the other two categories first, uh, in case people have had a go at these at home. We'll start with the Cherry Orchard, uh, Yasha, uh, Leonard Gaev, uh, Lubia Ranevsky and Varia, all pointless answers. Everyone apart from Anya Furs and Yasha for pointless answers for the cherry orchards. So well done if you said someone else. Um, Nana Cherry now. In a city, Mama is a pointless oh. answer. A cover of Cole Porters, What's I've that? Got You Under My Skin. Love Can Build a Bridge, the comic relief number one that she was credited on. Money Love Coochie as well was a pointless answer for Nana Cherry. And now, cherry producing countries. You could have said Algeria, Belgium, India, Serbia. There was Albania, which you also mentioned yeah. during your 60 seconds. Armenia, Austria, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Bosnia, Herzegovina, uh, Georgia, Guyana, Hungary, Iran, one of the biggest uh, producers. Uh, Kyrgyzstan, Lebanon, Moldova, Montenegro, North Macedonia, Suriname, Switzerland, Syria, Ukraine, and as so often, Uzbekistan. Very well done if you said any of those at home. Thank you very much, Richard, and thanks once again to our winning players, Steve and Tina, who take away today's jackpot of £3,500. Very well done. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>